Now? Yes. Okay. All right. This is a super quick test because on my side, I am seeing me stretched. And so we are trying to see if that is the case of how it's projecting to all of you out there. So um, if I'm still stretched, we're going to come up with a plan B real quick. This is apparently a recent Facebook problem. Am I stretched? Chris? Yeah. I look great. Okay. Super. Thank you. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start. So welcome. Good morning. I am Lisa Bronner and this is my second Facebook Live and I'm coming to you from my house where you are maybe used to seeing me, but uh, being in your house might be a new thing for this. Um, so this is a little different from my last one. For one, I have a different crew working the camera for me. I used to have my team from Dr. Bronner's and today I have my kiddos. So they are learning and we are learning um, about making this happen. So thanks so much for joining us. This is Earth Week. As you, you may have heard that, I hope it has made it into the news. Um, and Dr. Bronner's always celebrates Earth Week really big. We do a lot. We do a lot of education. We do uh, uh, advocacy. We do uh, just some enthusiasm. And, and because we all are doing this remotely, and I had to project my normal presentation anyways, I decided to do it here through the Going Green Facebook site, which is um, how we're live here. So this is going out to uh, internally to the Dr. Bronner's employees and I am happy that you're tuning in and I'm also really happy to welcome my Going Green audience. So um, a little bit of a behind the scenes of some of the things we do for Earth Week. So because this is going out to both, both audiences there, I'm going to cover some green cleaning uh, basics as well as a little bit of a deeper dive. So if this is your first time with me, uh, let me introduce myself again. My name is Lisa Bronner. I am the granddaughter of Dr. Bronner, who founded Dr. Bronner's Soaps in 1948. And I have been writing a blog called Going Green with a Bronner Mom for 10 years now. We just passed our 10th anniversary. And when I started my uh, journey as a, a blogger, my very first question to my brother uh, was, what's a blog? The reason I started was because we get a lot of input from our customers, a lot of questions, a lot of ideas, um, and that's kind of in our DNA as a company to communicate a lot with our customers. You know that my grandfather put a lot on his label because he wanted to communicate uh, to people and we just have kept that going. But after a while of a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, we noticed that there were a lot of um, repeated questions. And so we started the blog as a way to answer those so lots of people could see them uh, and I could address some of the most popular questions. I had to learn what a blog was. Uh, I've had to learn how to write one and the tech, a uh, little bit of that, although I have a lot of help. So that was where I began. And it kind of walked along my own green journey as I learned. Um, you might have thought that the knowledge was inherent since I'm a brawner, but that wasn't quite the case. I had a lot of learning to do myself. And over time, what I discovered is that green cleaning and going green in the house is actually really simple and it doesn't take a whole lot. Now to say that, I know that there's a lot of information out there uh, online about green cleaning. Lots of people write blogs, there's books, there's lots of products and that sort of thing. So for me to say it's simple kind of flies in the face of all of that. So, uh, but I'm here to tell you what's in my green cleaning cabinet so you know where to start. Um, not only is it simple, but it's very, very inexpensive. So what's in my green cleaning cabinet? Um, some of the, these, I could clean my entire house with these four ingredients. And actually, with the interchangeability of the two Dr. Bronner's uh, cleaners, the Castile Soap and the South Suds Biodegradable Cleaner, um, I could actually probably knock this down to three. So one of the heroes of green cleaning is, uh, is vinegar. Um, I buy this by the gallon and I go through it a lot. Vinegar uh, has been used to clean things for a very, very long time. Um, vinegar is a degreaser. 
It also is, it will dissolve uh, minerals, water spots. So it's great for glass cleaning. Uh, it's great actually as a deodorizer. And so green cleaning has a lot of place. I use it in laundry, I use it in glass cleaner. Uh, and as I said, I use it when I've got um, scale or water spot buildup, which are actually minerals. Another hero of, uh, of green cleaning, and I have it given this fancy name here, which is scouring powder. This is baking soda. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't need to be fancier than that. Uh, and so the baking soda is, is useful in many, many ways around the house. Um, it's, it's a great gentle abrasive, so if you need to scour something, uh, a sink, uh, a floor, uh, whatever, you can just scour it with this. And then if you, um, it also, as you know, baking soda is a deodorizer, so you can use it to um, uh, deodorize your laundry and also as, an, as a gentle abrasive in there. Um, so these two things, wonderfully, you know they're safe because they're edible. I mean, we use vinegar and baking soda in our cooking. Uh, and so you know that residues uh, from these two, even if they happen to remain on surfaces, they don't get fully wiped up. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, and so these two are great. Um, so the issue is with green cleaning. Why do we green clean? Why does it matter? Why don't we just go easy and uh, buy ready-made uh, products that are marketed uh, and so pretty uh, to, to clean our house? Uh, for one reason is that it is um, cheaper, honestly, it's cheaper. Another key reason is that we, I need to look at a little bit bigger picture of our health. Now granted, we wanna keep things simple, we wanna keep things safe, um, but we don't, uh, we, we don't know sometimes unexpected things happen. Uh, and so we never wanna have substances in our, in our house that could cause an accident. Um, now granted, we all know to keep cleaners out of the hands of children and pets, but things can happen. So we don't wanna have things in the house that can cause a problem. So, so general safety. But, you know, for the most of the time, that doesn't happen. Maybe you even are an adult living alone and there is very little chance that somebody's accidentally gonna drink your cleaner. That's true. The other two things though that are really unavoidable with whatever you're cleaning with is the residues left on surfaces and the fumes. And these things are uh, unavoidable. I mean, yes, you can wear masks, you can wear gloves and such, but the fumes are gonna remain in the air. The residues might even remain on the surfaces. So we wanna make sure that things such as the fumes and the residues um, are, are safe if they happen to be there. Uh, and so when you're using things that are edible, or things you know, that are, are uh, made from plant-based oils um, and organic, you know that the residues and even fumes are not going to be problematic. Um, and so those are some of the reasons why we wanna choose the gentlest cleaners that get the job done uh, with uh, no side effect. Anyhow, so, so I talked about the baking soda, I talked about the vinegar. Uh, the next thing is of course the Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap. This is a really simple soap. It is designed for the body. And if you haven't heard that before, please hear me. It is first and foremost a body soap. Uh, however, because it's just such a simple basic soap, it can be diluted to clean uh, lots of surfaces uh, from, um, from hard surfaces to textiles, fabrics, carpets, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm showing off here. Uh, first of all, I use it by the gallon. Um, and uh, this is our tea tree. And then I'm also showing off here this label, which is our Heal Earth. I talked about our Earth Week advocacy. And uh, this, right now, we are selling our quartz in these awesome Heal Earth uh, label. And there's lots of information on here about something called regenerative organic agriculture, which is a campaign Dr. Bronner's is supporting. It's um, part of the regenerative organic certification, which is a new certification that uh, can apply to, um, to products that you buy. I know you've heard about many certifications. Some of them are more meaningful than others. This one is like the gold standard. It's taking the principles of organic and the principles of fair trade and the principles of animal welfare and putting them all together. So, so much to learn about that. So uh, you can check out the Heal Earth label and there's lots of information about the whole campaign and the bigger picture 
uh, on the Dr. Bronner's website, on the Dr. Bronner's blog. So definitely check that out. I'm going to be writing uh, next month a deeper dive into our first regenerative organic certified product, which is our uh, virgin coconut oil. So you can read about that soon. And then lastly, the fourth ingredient in my green cleaning cabinet is salsuds. Now salsuds is different from the Castile in that it is not a soap, it is a detergent. Now don't let that word scare you um, because a detergent just means it's a, uh, a surfactant that will not react with hard water. That is where Castile soap does have, uh, it does have a reaction if you have hard water and you're cleaning something shiny like your glasses, your car, uh, you might notice the minerals that react, that fall out of the water from the soap. Um, Salsas doesn't have that. And so we have the Salsas, so I use this for a little heavier duty cleaning, or if I'm washing something like my car that I, you know, really want to be shiny when it's done. Um, it is biodegradable, so that means that runoff is going to break down and not be of harm to the environment. So, Super simple, four ingredients. You can clean your whole house top to bottom. Now, the other things I have in my cleaning cabinet uh, are, uh, well, these have been made so nice and pretty by our graphic designer. I used to have it all handwritten out and it was kind of messy. But these are my dilution cheat sheets of ways you can dilute the Castile soap and the sal suds for lots of uses around the house. And this way um, you can, uh, you know, clean, clean your entire house with just these products. So these I put up in my cabinet. And the last thing is tools. You gotta have the right tools. Um, and so the tools that I use are really good scrub brushes. Now, green cleaning does take a little bit more elbow grease. And the reason is because you're not using the super strong chemicals. Those have side effects. They don't stop working when you're done with them. They continue to dissolve whatever it is. Uh, they're not biodegradable, um, but the drawback or the, the, the other side of it is that you need a little bit more of the human component, which is scrubbing. So having some good scrub brushes, grout brushes, I get so many questions about cleaning my grout and I, I, I wish I had a spray and go type answer for you. I know that, that there are products out there, you spray and leave it and that's great, but the reason that it's spray and go is because they're super, super powerful and they are leaving residues there. So um, for cleaning grout, I just did this the other day. Uh, I just use the salsas or the Castile in my all-purpose spray. I have that back here. This is my, I have like four of these in my house so I can have them all over the place. Um, and so I just spray it with that, sprinkle on a little baking soda, give it a scrub and go. So having good, uh, good brushes is crucial, some bigger ones here. And then I have a whole pile of these. I didn't pull them all out. And these are definitely my prettier ones. But uh, I talk a lot about microfiber cloths. I like microfiber because uh, they're washable, reusable. I have pack, a pack that I've had for years and years. Um, as I said, they're not the prettiest, but they still work. They're really grippy um, and they are very soft. So they're good for you know glass and for wood, that sort of thing. Um, there is not a perfect fabric uh, but these ones are, are really good. So the only things you're not seeing here that of course I use are my vacuum cleaner and my mop. Now my mop is also microfiber because I can take the mop head off and throw it in the washer. Can't do that with a cotton string mop. And so, um, so that's my green cleaning cabinet. That's it. You can get fancier. You can add essential oils and that's fantastic. Go ahead. Um, those can personalize your cleaners, make your house smell the way you want it. And that's really important because so much of how we perceive clean is how things smell. So uh, feel free to add whatever smells clean to you. Lemon, orange. If you want a really powerful clean smell, take our tea tree and combine it with our eucalyptus. And that is a knock you over clean smell, let me tell you. So um, make, make it your own. So essential oils you might could add to this. Um, and pretty much that's it. Now what I want to do with you to take things a step further is show you one way that you can combine these to make a really cool soft scrub. Now I did not come up with a soft scrub recipe. The book that guided me in my green journey was this one, which is Clean House, Clean Planet by Karen Logan. 
And uh, she wrote an excellent... It's basically like a cookbook, but for green cleaning. Lots of recipes, lots of explanations of the whys, of uh, comparing the conventional to the homemade. Um, and so this recipe, which she called Earth Scrub, is a really nice soft scrub. You get to learn a little chemistry while you're doing it. Uh, you know, if you saw my recent post, I did it with my kids so they could see the whole acid base reaction between vinegar, which is acidic, and baking soda, which is alkaline. So that was cool. And uh, then this soft scrub makes a great replacement for anything you might use to scour your, your bathtubs, your sinks, your, um, even your grout, as I was saying. So, um, also, I forgot to mention at the beginning, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Go ahead and get your questions in, and I will have some Q&A at the end. Uh, I may not be able to get to all the questions, depending on how many come in. But go ahead and put your questions there. I have one of my team members uh, sending me the questions. I've got my iPad right here, so I'm reading uh, what your questions are, and I will get to them afterwards. Um, I would love to know where you're all watching from. So uh, who's watching from the furthest away? I'm here in Southern California where it is 1020. So 1022. So uh, I'd love to hear from you as well. Okay, so this is round two. We had some technical issues there. Um, and so I'm going to just sit here and uh, chat for a bit. Hopefully you all will pop on over here from the other live video. I really appreciate your sticking with us through this. Um, so let us know when you're here. That would be great. I was in the process of making the soft scrub. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten farther than combining the baking soda and the Castile soap. So I hope, you're, I hope you're still joining us. We are here, if, uh, if, if maybe you're just joining the live for the first time, I'm Lisa Bronner, and I'm doing a demonstration and partially in celebration of Earth Week of what's in my cleaning cabinet, which are these ingredients here. I can clean my entire house with baking soda, vinegar, Dr. Bronner's Castile soap, and salsuds. Um, one thing you might have noticed uh, is that my salsa is I have it here in a gallon with a super old label because uh, I just um, I just use this pump here to to you know pump the amount that I need. I know it's a one ounce pump, so that makes it really easy. We do not sell those. Don't ask, but you can easily find one online. Um, and so uh, the uh, salsa is here. This is our current label. If you haven't seen that. If you ever have trouble finding salsas, look in the cleaning section of the store. It's not sold alongside these, which are sold in the personal care section. The Castile soaps are sold in the personal care section, but the salsas is sold in the cleaning section. So uh, check that out. So are we, uh, are, we're, we're still, we're, are we good? We live? All right. Okay. So I'm going to continue on with making the soft scrub. So what I have right here is baking soda combined with soap. I'm going to dilute this mixture a little bit with a cup of water. Okay, get that mixed in so that it's um, somewhat liquid. It's still going to be pretty thick. Okay, I just use a little bit of muscle there to work it in. I'm kind of uh, dissolving the baking soda and the soap here, making a few bubbles. All right. And uh, once I've got this mixed in, then we're going to see that acid base reaction that I was talking about. Uh, we're going to use the fact that vinegar is an acid and we're going to make the reaction with baking soda. Now, sometimes I see recipes online that, that just call for you to react baking soda with vinegar and clean your house with it. That actually won't do any good because you're killing, you're using up the acidity of the vinegar that might cut grease or dissolve water spots or whatever it is um, and uh, you're, you're already using that up by reacting it. We're not using baking soda and vinegar as the cleaner. We're actually using baking soda and vinegar as the structure here. So the cleaner is still going to be the soap and the baking soda and vinegar is just going to give us a reaction that's going to produce the foam that will be the structure of the soft scrub. 
So uh, if you were wondering about how that works. Now, as I was talking about, how am I going to make sure that the vinegar doesn't react with the soap? Because if vinegar reacts with soap, it breaks it down. Fortunately, baking soda is more reactive than soap. And so it reacts with the vinegar first. And so therefore, the vinegar is going to react with the baking soda, give us foam, and it's not going to um, break down the soap. What's very important is that you observe the ratio here. So don't just throw in the ingredients in any volume. That sounds good. Go ahead and take a look at the measurements and do that because if you do have too much vinegar, it'll overreact with the baking soda. There won't be enough baking soda to react the vinegar and then it will go after the soap. So what does soap and vinegar look like? It looks like muck. It looks like a whitish, oily, chunky substance. Um, if you just do vinegar and soap. The baking soda is very, very important here. Okay, so I've got my mixture, oops, pretty liquid here. So this is where the chemistry is about to happen. This is vinegar, quarter cup of vinegar. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in. I really hope my bowl is big enough because it's gonna foam and make our soft scrub. So here we go. All right, so if you can see, you're seeing the, the foam Remember the volcano reaction y'all did in eighth grade science? That's what's going on here. Um, it is reacting with the baking soda and giving us our beautiful foam. I'm just going to keep mixing it until basically I see that the reaction is over. And then we are done. Now I use the tea tree for this. As I've said, you can use any scent. I also use the Castile for this. You can use the Salsuds. The ratio is different. With Salsuds, you need very, very little. Uh, so if you decide to use the Salsuds, uh, check out that measurement. It's, I believe, a quarter cup. All right, so here we go. So this is soft scrub. It's, uh, mine's a pretty good consistency. I feel pretty comfortable with this. If it were too thick, I could add a little water but this feels pretty good. I think it'll go into my bottle. All right. Now, you need an empty jar or a bottle. I have a really old empty Salsuds bottle. Wow, this is so old, it doesn't even have a stamp for when it was made, which was, that was a long time ago. We started uh, putting, putting stamps on the bottle. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill this in my, my bottle here, and then... We're good to go. And this is a really nice um, thing to use for scrubbing sinks, bathtubs, grout. Uh, it, it, it just, it's like all in one. You don't have to spray with the all-purpose spray and sprinkle on the baking soda. Now, sometimes if you let this sit in your cabinet for a couple weeks, it will uh, harden. It's just the water content is evaporating. Just put some water in it, shake it up, and keep using it. I go through this stuff pretty fast because, well, I kind of think it's fun to use. Yeah, that's probably why I write a blog about green cleaning. But um, if, uh, if, if you don't use it up and it hardens, just go ahead and, and add some water. I've never had it go bad. I know that's a question I get a lot. Um, there's really, I mean, with the vinegar and the, the soap, there's really nothing in here to go bad. Um, but as always, if anything smells wrong, just toss it out and start over. You know, next time maybe ha put, cut all the recipe ingredients in half so that uh, you don't make as much. But in my house, we have a lot to clean. I have, I go through this stuff pretty quickly. All right. Now, if you don't have an empty Dr. Bronner's bottle around, you can just use any old jar you have. I wouldn't buy one. Um, I would, you know, maybe you can use a big spice jar from your kitchen or any bottle that you have, even if it's a food bottle. You don't know, like syrup, like a syrup bottle, that would work. All right, so that's about to get over the top of that, so I'm going to, I've got a little extra here, so I would fill up another bottle, but I don't have that right now. Anyhow, so there you go. We've got salsa, or I'm sorry, we've got a Castile soft scrub made with Karen Logan's recipe from Clean House, Clean Planet called uh, Earth Scrub. 
Super simple ingredients right there. And um, you can teach your children and clean your house at the same time. So I'm happy to answer your questions now about, uh, about green cleaning, but honestly about anything. If you want to hear more about regenerative organic or about Dr. Bronner's or about, uh, oh, I don't know. I get so many wonderful questions. I absolutely love it. People who have met my grandfather, he passed away in 97, or people who have been using the soap for 40 years. I love hearing those stories, so please feel free to share them. Um, I, did, uh, I did see some questions come through already that uh, about how, when to use which one as far as the Castile versus the Salsuds. Because Castile's a soap, Salsuds is, is not a soap, it's a detergent, there's a couple situations in which you would choose one or the other, although most of the time they are interchangeable. So for personal care, you only use the Castile soap. The Salsuds is meant to be a really uh, good cleaner at pulling oils off of surfaces and debris. We don't want that on our body. Now you're gonna look at those ingredients and say, wait, these are in my body wash, these are in my shampoo. Yeah, they shouldn't be in those you, uh, because they're very drying. So um, the Castile soap is really best for the body. Uh, the South Suds is great for um, hard water when you're washing something shiny. So you probably know if you have hard water, uh, you could definitely look up your region and see if you have hard water. If you're washing your dishes or your car, um, you might, you'll want to go with the sal suds for that reason. Um, other than that, uh, for pet washing, I only use the Castile. I wash my dog regularly with the peppermint or eucalyptus. Um, with cats, you only want to use the unscented because cats are more sensitive to essential oils. Um, so uh, other than that, you really can do either one for making an all-purpose spray, mopping your floor, uh, washing your laundry, uh, even on your carpets, they're pretty interchangeable. So, um, I, as I said, I've got my teammate uh, from her house sending me questions here. So, sh uh, do you use a shaker bottle? This is from Yoshi. Do you use a shaker bottle with a shaker bottle inside to mix all the ingredients? Oh, that's an interesting idea. Are, are we talking about, I don't know if we're talking about the soft scrub here. Um, I think you would have to start with a ball, uh, with a bowl, because the, the mi mixing the Castile soap with the baking soda, that was actually a really thick paste that I ended up with right at first. So you would have to start there. But once you put it in here, um, a shaker ball would actually be a pretty good way to keep it mixed up. I've never, I love hearing new tips, so that's a great idea. Um, so you can, you can go ahead and do that. If this sits, it might separate in the sense that some of the, the um, baking soda might fall to the bottom and you'll have to remix it up, um, but just the first time you use it. So yeah, that, so that's a great, a great way to go. Um, some of the other uh, places that you can use these things, um, you know that when uh, you have carpet cleaners, and carpet cleaners are another place that you can buy a store-bought solution, but you can also just use the sal suds and uh, just a little bit because it's it's a suds it really foams up just use a drop in your carpet cleaner and that will clean your carpet beautifully um, so Caroline wants to know how does vinegar react with sal suds and bar soap great question so the bar soap is is castile soap in a bar form a uh, little bit of a different um, way that it's made but it's still soap and vinegar is going to react with the bar soap the same way it reacts with uh, the liquid. So just for fun, just for fun, as I said, I've got a funny definition of fun. Let me show you what happens when you react castile soap with vinegar. So this is, this is castile soap. Okay, you've got the nice, you know, clear amber soap. And I'm going to plop in some vinegar. It's like, it's like curdling milk. So this is not dangerous, but if you can see, we've got this milky, uh, oily substance. And this is not soap. You have broken down the soap into its original oils. And can you see the chunkiness of that? So that's chemistry at work again. You've reacted an acid and a base. This will not clean anything. Uh, so you definitely don't want to do that. So, uh, so Caroline, bar soap would do the same thing. I'm going to put this in the sink and wash my hands. Um, 
Okay. All right. So yeah, it took a little bit of soap to get that mixture off my hands. Uh, now, salsuds. Salsuds is different. Salsuds is different. It does not react as readily. A, a detergent is more stable than soap. And so um, it doesn't react to get with the vinegar. So now saying that, I'm not quite sure where you're going with this. I'm not sure what you want to do by combining vinegar and salsas. They wouldn't necessarily be a benefit to each other. Of course, in the mixture I just made with the soft scrub, uh, the vinegar is still going to react to the baking soda instead of the salsa. So, yeah, but there is chemistry happening. Um, even though I did not study chemistry in college, I studied English, um, I answer a lot of chemistry questions. My dad was a chemist, so that helps. Um, and I have a whole blog post about what can you mix with Castile soap uh, and not cause reactions and such. So it's really important before you green clean to know what can mix with what because uh, chemistry happens. So be careful there. So Donna wants to know, does the baking soda ever dissolve in soft scrub? Um, that's a great question. So does baking soda dissolve? Baking soda technically does not dissolve. Um, it's not like, you know, you put sugar in water and dissolve it and then it's, it's permanently suspended in the water. Uh, that's dissolving. A baking soda is, is only uh, temporarily suspended in the water. If you let it sit, it would fall to the bottom. Now, the baking soda that has reacted with the vinegar has formed actually the structure of foam. And so that is staying intact uh, and it's holding the soap up. Um, but as it sits on the shelf, the baking soda might fall to the bottom uh, and uh, you would, as I said, you just need to shake it up. If it needs a little bit more water to reliquify it, that works too. Uh, so technically it's not dissolving. So Edward wants to know, in terms of disinfecting surfaces that could transfer the coronavirus, would salsas work just as well as bleach or Lysol? So th these substances all work differently. So bleach, uh, bleach is a single ingredient, so that's an easy one to talk about. Um, bleach kills. That is how it cleans. It, uh, it and it only kills, it does not remove. If you had a dirty surface, like you were baking and, and you had oil and egg and whatever on your counter and you used bleach, it wouldn't actually remove all that stuff. Uh, it, it kills. And Lysol is a, a product with many, many ingredients in there. And those ingredients, some of the ingredients in there are also there for that purpose, to kill. Um, soap and salsas work their surfactants, they remove. Uh, that is how soap uh, and uh, detergent, these are the words surfactant that I was using, that's how they clean. They actually grab things and pull them away. There is a microscopic um, uh, arrangement happening. It's not really a reaction where um, soap uh, and salsas, the molecule is amazing as far as chemistry goes in that it has two ends that have an opposite charge. You don't usually have that. Usually molecules have one charge positive or negative. Soap and salsas have opposite charged molecules. And so they are attracted to the, whatever it is you're trying to clean. Um, and they, the, the negative end is attracted to the, the oil or the virus. Um, and the positive end is attracted to water. It forms this amazing sphere called a micelle where whatever it is you're trying to clean off the germ, the dirt, the debris, the virus, it's surrounded and then the water rinses it away. Because of this, uh, because Clorox or, or bleach does not remove, it, it will kill the things but leave it there. Now, here's the interesting thing. All viruses are different. Uh, the coronavirus happens to be a, a, a virus that is surrounded by something called a lipid layer. And a lipid is a type of oil. Um, and because soap and salsas and detergents are attracted to that oil, it happens to be that with the coronavirus, um, it really uh, holds on to that. Uh, research is even showing that it, it actually does happen to kill. That's not how it usually works with soap, but it does happen to kill that. Um, the New York Times actually had a really great uh, diagram uh, walkthrough of how that works. So uh, that is why you're hearing the recommendations, use soap, use soap, use soap, um, because soap is enough. And soap doesn't have the side effects. Bleach, uh, Lysol has the side effects. I mean, huge amount of research into how harmful these things are to our health, uh, especially the fumes. Even if you are always very careful about 
um, how you use them and storing them away. The fumes are actually very dangerous to our lungs and you see a lot of pulmonary problems with, with, uh, with the more harmful cleaners such as bleach and Lysol. So, um, so soap is enough. Soap is all you need. So clean it. Now, as you heard me say, soap must be rinsed. It, it, it needs to have the water to grab those soap molecules and rinse them away. So you can't use it as a waterless hand sanitizer. You can't use it as a spray your surfaces and walk away. You need to, you need to rinse them. Uh, just, and by rinse, I mean just take a cloth that's, that's wet or damp and, and, and wipe it. That'll, that'll grab everything and take it off of there. So soap's amazing. It's really one of the most amazing substances. We've known about soap for millennia. There is uh, evidence back in like ancient Egypt that they had soap because one of the most basic uh, forms of soap is from potash, which is ashes, potassium hydroxide, reacting with animal fat. So you have some animal fat from your cooking pot that ends up uh, uh, reacting with the ashes in the fire, and uh, then you notice the next time it rains, there's like these clean streaks going down the rocks, and what is that? Well, that was like the first soap. So soap is really amazing. Uh, and, and how it works. We've known about it for a long time as, as a people, and um, you know, sometimes the old ways really are the best. So check out the soap. All right, we're gonna take a couple more questions here. Um, and if we did not get to your question, we, I will answer it in the comments. So if you didn't ask it, you think about it later, whatever, go ahead and uh, put it in the question in the comment stream, or if you don't end up watching this live and you watch it later, I will get to your questions. So, um, what we're going to do uh, uh, in further in future lives, I'm going to talk more about the personal side of being green and how we care for our bodies. Uh, the last two I've been focusing here on green cleaning. So Ryan was asking, what should you use on the exterior of a car? Uh, so when I was in college and I didn't have very much money and I didn't have uh, fancy things like, you know, a hose. Um, unfortunately, I lived in a place where it would pour uh, thunderstorms. I lived in the south. It was wonderful. And when it would pour, I would run outside with my salsas and I'd wash my car really quickly and then let the rain rinse it away. This is like the poor college kid way to wash your car. Um, although now I do have a hose and I live in a house. This is still how we wash our cars. Um, I have to say it's usually my kids washing the car. Um, but this is how we wash our cars, just with a little bit of sal suds in a bucket. The sal suds is pretty concentrated, so you just need like a small squirt and that will uh, be a plenty. You'll notice your bucket as you, as you uh, fill it with water gets super, super foamy. Um, so that's what I use to wash the car. It's safe on, on paint and such and really good at drying clean. I mean, you still need to wipe the car clean so you don't get the water, uh, the water drying on it, but, but that is how I wash my car. And lastly, um, Michael is asking, how do you use Castile soap as a shampoo? Which I do. I wash my hair with Castile soap. Um, and this is a little bit different. Once again, we're going to come back to the issue of pH. Um, it's everywhere. So I wash myself head to toe with a Castile. The difference is that conventional shampoo has a lower pH uh, that's usually slightly acidic. Uh, Castile soap has a slightly higher pH. It's up around eight. As I said, seven is neutral. So uh, it's about 8.9. So that's not that much higher, but our hair knows the difference. And what happens with the uh, alkaline pH of the soap is that your, your hair um, kind, of, kind of puffs up. And if you like, you know, the little fluffy look, that might be perfect. But other people describe that feeling as that it feels tangled or it feels like like Velcro, and that's actually a great description because what's happening on your strand of hair, your hair, strand of hair is like segmented. If you looked at it under a microscope, you would see it's segmented. And those segments kind of, kind of come out in alkaline soap. Uh, and so you have to counteract that by using an acidic rinse. So I wash my uh, hair with castile soap, rinse, rinse the soap out, and then I use either the Dr. Braun or Citrus Hair Rinse, which works great, couple capfuls of that diluted in water and that smooths out my hair or I use apple cider vinegar like a half cup of it with a half cup water once again it's the acidity that we're talking about um, 
And then uh, one other thing I was trying just this past week because I had a little extra time and I actually had a lot of lemons is I juiced some lemons because that's acidic too uh, just to see if it would have the same impact on my hair and it did. Um, so you could even use you could even use lemon juice. I was using like a quarter cup of lemon juice and a cup of water. Uh, the only thing about lemon juice is it's not shelf stable. Vinegar is shelf stable. You don't put vinegar in the fridge. Uh, lemon juice you couldn't put a bottle of it in your in your shower because uh, it will turn and you'd end up with some fermentation happening. So um, anyhow, but it would work. So a citrus rinse of some sort, either the Dr. Bronner's hair rinse, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice. Um, and so that is, that's how I wash my hair with Castile soap. It does take some getting used to. It's different. Your, your hair will not feel slippery because you won't have the coating of, um, of the synthetic uh, or silicone even uh, leftovers that they put on your hair so that your hair feels smooth. Your hair will be cleaner, um, but it does take a little bit of acclimation. So I always encourage people, you know, give it a couple weeks or maybe even alternate um, a couple uh, every other time you wash your hair so that you can get, get used to it. And it's just, it's just a little different. I discovered when I switched over to soap instead of shampoo, I discovered that my hair was actually a lot wavier because it didn't have the heavy coatings weighing it down. And so once those were off, my hair like got a lot wavier. So that was, that was kind of fun. Um, anyhow, so I am thanking you very much for joining me today and for, uh, being with me on this experiment of, uh, of doing this Facebook live. I appreciate your switching over from the other live. And uh, I hope to see you next time. So come visit me at my blog, which is uh, lisabronner.com or here on Facebook. Thanks so much.